Thank you for tuning in to Faith in Jesus Ministries. My name is Mike Barclay, the Preacher Man. Oh, it's a joy to come into your homes every week and bless you and make you a blessing. Man, I got a good message for you today. It's about depression, dealing with depression. Brother Mike's dealt with a lot of depression in his time. And I've overcome it with the power of Jesus. So we just want to bless you on Facebook and YouTube and the internet and television. It's just a joy to come into your homes. If you're ever in our area, stop by Faith in Jesus Ministries. Join one of our services. We promise you these are the finest people in Houston, Texas. They're going to bless you and make you a blessing in Jesus' name. This is a journey that we're on. Jesus is a journey. And I know that you think you know everything now. Out of the abundance of what you think, you speak. Sometimes if you just hold your peace and realize that the way you see it today, you might not see it that way five years from now. You will damage everybody with wrong information because you thought it was an experience and it's a journey. Touch somebody and tell them it's a journey. Old folks used to say, Lord, I wouldn't take nothing from a journey right now. I didn't know what they were saying. I live long enough to know what a journey is, though. On this journey of 50 years, I've had holy moments. You know, those moments when you get holy. Just float in the room and wonder why everybody ain't floating. I've had holy moments and I've had horrible moments didn't stay on the mountain and I didn't stay in the valley. Life is a journey. Touch your neighbor and say, take this journey. In the process of being on this windy road with twists and turns, laughter and pain, and pleasure and prosperity, heartaches and humblings. If you take God by the hand, he will teach you something. Some things are learned best on the mountain. Other things are learned best in the valley. The test is not given to destroy you. It's so you can study weak areas so you can study harder, better in the areas of your weakness several teachers out there nodding at me. The teacher doesn't give you the test because they don't like you. Automobiles are being made, they test them before they send it out. The amount of weight it can handle, a certain amount of combustion it can handle, the horsepower, the brakes, the resilience. Every now and then they have to do a recall. Something slipped by the test and when things slip by the test, people can get killed. You're driving something that hadn't been tested. What you're going through may be painful, it may be tough, but it's just a test. That addiction's just a test. That addiction to cocaine, to meth, to crack, to pot, to pain pills, to alcoholism. It's just a test. Sometimes in the middle of what you're doing, God will do a recall. God's not testing you to kill you. He's testing you to make you proven better than gold. The second half can be the best half. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm on this journey. Reading the other day in Job, Job 42, that Job answered the Lord. Job answered the Lord and says, Know that thou can do everything. Thought can be withholded from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Before I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Demand of thee, and declare I thy unto thee. I have heard of thee, the hearing of the ear. Now my eyes see you. I was running my mouth, and I didn't know what I was talking about. I lived my life on the basis of hearsay information. Somewhere along the journey, I had an encounter with him. Now I see. I'm enjoying being a grandfather. I just love my grandchildren. You live long enough to be a grandfather, you get revenge on your children. All the things you should have done better, and they call you saying, These kids are driving me crazy. Yeah, hallelujah. They so selfish. It's easy to speculate how something ought to be done. You haven't done it. Easy to advise other people how they ought to operate. So you get the same ch chance to do it yourself. I said, I heard all about it, and I uttered things. I didn't know what I was talking about. As I continue the journey, my eyes are open. My eyes see a thing. As I reward myself in dust and ashes. I was wrong. I wasn't as smart as I thought I was. Job said everything I did before I did through hearsay. Now I see the truth. That's when it all got started, except God said Job was a righteous man. He said, have you considered my servant Job? He him on his faithfulness and offers him up for this test. He had accomplished a whole lot till God was impressed. I hope to impress God. Brother Mike wants to impress God with his preaching. Job says, I really didn't know you like I know you now. I love to hear Christians testify. I loved the Lord for 26 years. Really, you know him. You know all about him. You don't even know about Brother Mike. You live with somebody 10 years and not know him. Grope after him that we might touch him. We're on a journey from speculation to revelation. Job gets a different picture of God when his cattle are dead. His house burned down and his kids were poisoned. His marriage fell apart and his, his wife said, I hate your breath. You thought yours was the only one could talk nasty. Job was a righteous and upright man with a bad marriage. Job was a righteous man and depressed. First the day he was born. When he lost his riches and his children and his reputation. My reputation and my 
relationship went sour, didn't start sour, went sour. He said at one point, the Lord knows the way that I take. Philip was running along chasing a eunuch. Ethiopian eunuch. Ethiopian eunuch is riding in a chariot. It says to Philip, run him down. Catch up with him. You gotta run fast to catch a chariot. The job, if you decide to take it, is to chase down the chariot. The eunuch is on his way back home. He catches the eunuch. The eunuch is reading out of Isaiah. Philip asked him, understandest thou what thou readest? How can I except some man should guide me? I got the book and I got the heart, but I still need somebody to give me the hookup. I want to point this out for all the independent people that think that you don't need anybody to teach you anything. Get off in your Bible with your closet and think you're being spiritual it just got weird Nick said how can I understand lest the man teach me I get to where nobody can tell you nothing I desired Philip to come up and sit with him the scripture he read was like this he was led to the sheep as a slaughter like a lamb dumb before his shearers opened he not his mouth in his humiliation judgment was taken away who should declare his generation for his life was taken from the earth he answered philip and said tell me something man who is this prophet he's talking about is it of himself or some other man philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture he preached unto him jesus he gave him revelation on the journey the eunuch is an ethiopian eunuch this is not ethiopia as we see it today the northeastern part of africa this territory at the time was defined as ethiopia this man is a servant the bible says to an african queen called candace the succession of african queens were warring women were women who fought as a unit coming to jerusalem going to jerusalem to worship he's on his way back he had a worship experience by being the descendant of the queen of sheba Remember, the Queen of Sheba came out of Africa to meet with Solomon because she heard of his wisdom. She was not happy with the religions in her country. She to test Solomon to see if his God was as good as they said he was. The Bible says she began to batter him with questions. She saw his answers were so profound. His wisdom was so integrous. She saw his wealth and his success. The order of his house. The Bible says there was no more breath in the queen. She said a romance ensued between the Queen of Sheba and Solomon. The romance was so strong she had to struggle to go back to her own country. She found a male counterpart that was intellectually as smart as she was was as wealthy as she was i don't want to talk to me this morning i'm preaching good now shout me down when i'm preaching good was as wealthy as she was she was torn between staying with him and going back to rule her own people she decided to go back home she tore down the idols of her people she started worshiping the jehovah god these are the descendants of the queen of sheba Makes sense this Ethiopian will be coming to Jerusalem. He's continuing to practice the religion that was introduced by the Queen of Sheba to Ethiopia. Some scholars think the Ark of the Covenant is hidden in Ethiopia. A particular unit must have been so good at what he did, he trusted him to run the treasury. As a reward, give him the privilege to make the rare privilege pilgrimage go to Jerusalem to have a worship experience. Went to Jerusalem to worship God according to the revelation he has been exposed to. Breakthroughs happens on the journey. He's had an experience at church. A real breakthrough happens on the journey. Hop a ride, man. Bring somebody on this journey with you. Most of us, particularly men, we don't talk. The question is not what God sent Philip. The question is, will you let him in? I know you well enough to know you've mistaken my Philip theology with Boaz. Boaz is your bowl. People shouldn't have to fall in love with you and be able to help you. Now sit down. Let me teach you something. It's a common mistake made all through the Bible of people trying to act like more than they are. It's a mistake the children of Israel made when God broke, brought down the law. He sent the law for them to keep the law. The law for them to admit they couldn't keep the law. That's why he made the tabernacle the time he presented the law. He called the law and said, this we will do. Arrogance always destroys opportunity. It's a common mistake. We've been making it for thousands of years. Shocked that we have not learned the blessing of uncertainty. Deliberation of saying I can't. Show me. That is the portal of revelation. It's the nectar of the human experience. The attraction that draws the rabbi. Sit with the student. Fold the mystery. Say, when you say, I count not myself. When you become vulnerable and say, I'm not there yet. I don't know how. Be scared. Teach me. And you just scare, disguise the opportunity for revelation. You're stuck on the journey. You're more concerned about your pride than your productivity. It's the power that only comes when you're uncertain. You can't have faith till you're uncertain. Faith is the substance of the thing you hope for. You already got it together. Faith will never run you down. Just for somebody that says, how can I? Therefore, by being justified by faith. I got the Bible. I got the Bible for you. It says, when you stop justifying yourself, it will justify you. Run down your chariot. Stop a ride. And Philip got on board the chariot. Opened up the missing part. Oh God, this is so good. Cars wreck over a missing part. Wouldn't have bought it if it didn't look good. Wouldn't have bought it if it didn't smell new. Broke over the little things. Things that makes it recall is the little things.
See, the eunuch was missing a little thing. I do not understand why people come to church late and leave early. I understand why you didn't make the trip if you're not going to get everything you can get. Going to the football game and missing the game. Eating the food. I'm so into giving you little things. He's chasing this guy down. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Philip gave him a little thing. He came to a place in his journey where he ran into some water. Faith needs water to work. Faith needs to work to work. Faith can't work through thought. Faith has to take action to be legitimate. Take your faith and put it into action. Faith will work if you work it. Don't work it. You can shout about it. You can dance about it. You can preach about it. You can come to church. You get an opportunity. You ought to say, here's water. You can't baptize somebody who won't bend. Or to baptize somebody, they got to be able to bend. It says, you will never know me in the power of my resurrection. You know me in the power of my suffering. I take you down and you trust me. The downside. Cast all your cares on me. Cast all your pain on him. Cast all your burdens on him. He took you down. He'll take you up again. Praise him to the devil knows. To hell hears. As I close my message. I know I don't say it much. Like I used to. Get somebody by the hand. Shake them like you're trying to shake a rug. Look them in the eye and tell them, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready for God to bless you. If you'd like to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just say this simple prayer with me. Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. If you said that simple prayer with us right now, we'd like to believe you got saved. Get into a good Bible preaching church. Put God first place in your life. He'll take you places you never dreamed. Stay tuned for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and show you his kindness, his love, his mercy, his happiness, and his joy. May he crown your head with the crown of favor. May he open the windows of heaven and pour blessings upon your life you have no room to receive. We thank you at Faith in Jesus Ministries for your faithful financial support. Your faithful financial support is much greatly appreciated here at Faith in Jesus Ministries. Can I talk to you for a minute? Can I get a dollar from you? Could you donate a dollar to help me spread the gospel in Jesus Christ so every ear can hear and Jesus can come back? And we could, if you, if everybody donated a dollar to me, we could put MD Anderson Cancer Hospital out of business in Jesus' name. And we're debt free, so if you send me $20, that whole $20 goes to the world of evangelism. If you send me $1,000, that whole $1,000 goes to the world of evangelism. The Lord told me 120 of you would donate $1,000 to Faith in Jesus Ministries. So we'd like to bless the gift and bless the giver. 30, 60, 100 fold and a thousand times return for blessing faith in Jesus ministries with seed money in Jesus name. We figured out YouTube and it cost about a dollar per viewer to get people saved. So if you send me $10, I'll get 10 people saved. If you send me $20, I'll get 20 people saved. If you send me $1,000, I'll get all your family and friends into heaven in Jesus name. We'd like to send you for your uh, in, partnership of any dollar amount the DVD of the month. It's my famous, fabulous uh, sermon, my most popular sermon on YouTube, sent to you on a DVD to bless your life in Jesus' name. We're able to send that to you because we're debt free. So if you send me $20, that whole $20 goes to the world of evangelism. So we'd like to pray for you to get the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And be sure to like my videos and share my videos and subscribe to my channel to get some good Holy Spirit filled preaching in Jesus name. May the Lord bless you all with $100,000 in Jesus name.